All right, welcome to today's Lunch and Learn webinar, Keeping the Physical and Virtual Worlds in Sync, brought to you by ArcherPoint and Dynamic Manufacturing Solutions. It's a constant struggle for many organizations to keep their physical operations in sync with the data in Microsoft Dynamics and AV often relying on paper-based systems for warehouse management and manufacturing simply because they are unaware of other options they continue to struggle. But there is a surprisingly simple solution, barcoding. Today's Lunch and Learn will provide an overview of barcoding and how easy it can be to get a barcoding strategy implemented. Our presenter today is Mark Hamblin, President of Dynamic Manufacturing Solutions a software development and consulting firm specializing in add-ons for Dynamics and AV. Mark spent many years working in manufacturing and distribution before leveraging that experience to create software for those industries. As part of his software development career, Mark also taught computer engineering at the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology and was recently voted one of its top 50 alumni since its founding. Mark also sits on various boards of direction for software development and manufacturing programs. In just under an hour today, you'll discover how barcoding can dramatically simplify physical processes and data management, saving you time and money and allowing you to keep your physical and virtual worlds in sync. We will offer a Q&A. Feel free to um, Use the questions pane of your GoToWebinar console to enter your questions as they come along and we'll address them at the end of Mark's presentation. Without any further delay, Mark, over to you. Oh. Yeah. Excellent. All right, well, good afternoon, everybody. We, uh Apologize uh, for the brief uh, time change there, or the brief notice on the time change, but it uh, looks like we have quite a few people here, and we'll, we'll get through. Um, <clears throat> we won't keep you for very long. I'm, I'm losing my voice, so if you do have any questions, just uh, just use the chat to, uh, to ask them. I'll do my best to answer them or speak up or whatever is required. But what we're going to do is just briefly go through and talk about, you know, um, first, why you want to what is the virtual world versus the physical world and why do you want those in sync and then how do you do it <laughs> and uh, we'll give you a little bit of a software demo as well at the end to give an example of things that you can do to manage this problem okay so <clears throat> let's start with electronic data so everybody uses electronic data today uh, that's the whole reason you bought NAV you bought NAV to manage your data so it can be a competitive advantage but in order for it to be competitive you need to be able to uh, get it in in a timely manner, and it has to be accurate. If it's not, that data is going to lead you astray. It's not going to give you that competitive advantage you're hoping for. <clears throat> so, the way you get that data in, and if we're talking about shop floor, or warehouse, or those sorts of things, is via the physical transaction. So, <clears throat> you know, you ship something. That's a physical transaction. You know, and generally, if you're not using some sort of data collection tool, that generates a piece of paper, right? So you mark down on a piece of paper, you ship something, or you received something. And then somebody has to go in and enter that into your NEV system. And that's where the problems uh, start, right? Uh, as soon as you have to do that manual data entry, you've got a problem with matching up what's happening in the real world with your physical world in map, okay? So, <clears throat> Very often when we talk to clients, what we see is, you know, paper gets misplaced or it gets misplaced for a certain period of time and is only delayed. Um, and uh, or, or there's issues with retyping the information from the piece of paper into NAV. And that adds a lot of cost. People don't realize the cost of that poor data entry. It's not just redoing the data entry. But if I go in and, and um, you know, I didn't properly record a receipt, and the system doesn't know I actually have an item in stock, I might reorder that item, and I'm doubling up my inventory. Uh, or, um, you know, I, I have it listed as being in stock in NAV, and I just don't know I've shipped it, and I promised it to another customer, and I don't have it, I'm missing shipments, and my customers are getting unhappy and going elsewhere. So there's, there's fairly significant costs with expediting, overstocking, you know, lost sales, all of those sorts of things that can occur 
if your physical world doesn't match what your virtual lab world thinks it should be. Okay, and that's those are the items we just talked about. <coughs> Um, and poor customer service is a big one. You know, you, um, you know your on-time delivery decreases by 10%. You're losing you know, roughly 1% of your market share. Uh, there was a study a few years ago that, uh, that sort of showed that. So definitely an issue having your paper-based systems not matching your NAV system. So how do we deal with that? Well, <coughs> we basically use barcoding. Okay? So there's a lot of different approaches to collecting data. Barcoding, it's probably the most accessible. It's a commodity, it's been out there for 50 years, and um, you know it's, it's very easy, very cost effective to get into. Other options are RFID <coughs> uh, and things like that, OCR for uh, you know some types of documents like receipt documents and things like that. But generally barcoding is going to give you your biggest bang for the buck. Okay. The best thing about it is it improves transaction accuracy. <clears throat> and what I mean by that, typically it's you know when we're dealing with inventory, it can be labor as well, labor or inventory. And um, what that means is, you know, we'll use the inventory example. When I pick something or I ship something, I'm scanning a barcode, and that ver verifies that that physical object is recorded as it stands on the shop floor in NAV. So I didn't grab the wrong box, you know, I didn't pick from the wrong bin, I didn't scan the wrong sales order, those types of things. So you improve that accuracy fairly significantly. <clears throat> and then the big advantage of that, of course, is now I'm not doing all those things we mentioned in the last slide, which is I'm not overstocking things because, you know, I don't think I have them. I'm not expediting things because I thought I had them, but I don't. Um, you know, and, and the pickers on the warehouse, if you have a larger warehouse, what that means is if they're told to go to a specific bin to pick that product, uh, they'll have a very high level of confidence that it's there. So it dramatically improves your warehouse um, efficiency as well. In the case of, uh, you know, labor capture on the shop floor for manufacturers and even for distributors as well, um, you know, having that real-time labor feedback on production orders or jobs or assembly orders or whatever you're using is vitally important for customer service. You know, a customer phones up wants to know where their order is or the production planner wants to figure out what's going to be late. Knowing exactly what's going on in real time is actually very important. And just as importantly is um, <laughs> using that information to set your pricing. Um, if you expect something to take 10 hours to build, you know, because that's what guys write on their time card. And when you start recording actuals with barcode scanning, it turns out it's 14 or 15 hours. Now you know why your margins are so low. You're spending a lot more money to build a product than you expected. Or you need to track rework and things like that. So that barcoding really does give you that timely and accurate information that you need to better make decisions on the data that you have in your system. Okay. Now, that's all fine and dandy, um, but just collecting that data often isn't enough. So most of this is about collecting data. But another thing to consider is we're collecting this data, we're bringing it into NAV, and we're turning it into information. So data really is, is useless. If, I, if somebody tells me I have 40 of this item in stock, that's meaningless without some context, without understanding, oh, well, Normally, I stock 300, so 40 is actually quite bad. Or normally, we only buy that as we need it, so 40 is really bad. Um, so without that additional context, that data point means nothing to me. Right? So when we pull this data in from the shop floor, we combine it with other data in NAV to turn it into information, typically on reports and business intelligence and things like that, to allow people to make decisions. Well, why do we just do that in NAV? Why not give the guys on the shop floor, if you have a decent workforce, the ability to make some of those decisions themselves? So for example, <coughs> I received something. Wouldn't it be nice if the system popped up on a mobile device right then and said, you know what, this thing is expedited. It's needed on the production floor right now. Or this needs to be shipped to a customer immediately. Uh, another example, somebody goes to pick from a, a bin and the bin is empty. Well, what do they do now? 
do they write it on a piece of paper and, and figure it out you know the next day or later that afternoon or do we give them enough information to make a decision on what to do at that point right so beyond just barcoding for data collection with the clients that we have available on the shop floor in, in other words the the interface and the hardware we have available on the shop floor we can actually provide information to the guys on the shop floor now instead of just you know have them being data capture devices, right? Then having people be nothing more than a tool for capturing data. Okay, so now that we know that we all want barcoding because it's great, we have a few different options uh, to, to actually implement that. So the first two there are actually um, available in, in NAV today. So ADCS is an automated data capture system uh, that is available in, in NAB, <clears throat> and I'll talk about it more in a sec. If you're on 2013 and up, it's no cost. 2009, it's older, it's a bit of a cost. And uh, starting with 2015, we had the tablet client, and in 2016, we have the phone client. So both of those can actually be used on the shop floor, either manufacturing or distribution, to present and collect data. Outside of NAB, if we look at add-ons, we have things like uh, mobile WMS, where it runs on a more rugged device uh, and is really tailored to make the process of running your warehouse more efficient. And if we're talking about manufacturing, we also have the ability to capture labor and shop for events with a, a time collection module. That's what this TCM is, time collection module, um, <clears throat> independently of having to use sort of a nav interface on the shop floor. So, we can use NAV as sort of a generic tool set, if we'd like, or we can go to something that's purposely built to make your uh, shop environment more efficient. And the choice of which to use depends on a few criteria. So let's look at the ADCS. <coughs> Only works with warehousing. Uh, it's free in 2013 and up, as I mentioned. In 2009, it's older. It's, it's a fairly hefty cost. You have to weigh that. Um, but the downside is, <coughs> you know, it's not a very nice user interface. Um, it doesn't handle serial numbers and log numbers very well. It really doesn't do much more than picking and inventory counts, and, and it's very basic. But for a lot of people, that might be enough. You could turn it on in 15 minutes and, and start scanning barcodes if you like. Okay, so that is something that you can look at. Most people don't use this out of the box. Um, they customize the heck out of it, or buy an add-on that's already customized the heck out of it. But it is there, and the basics do work out of the box. Uh, the next option is uh, a tablet or a phone client. <clears throat> um, now, those currently don't have built-in barcoding support. That might be coming where you can actually use the camera in the device to, to scan a barcode. Uh, so today, you typically pair it with a device like I've got there beside, and it's about roughly that scale. Uh, the device is a little handheld device, Bluetooth device, you can scan barcodes into. But if you've used those tablet and phone clients, you're very much like what you'd expect on a tablet app or a phone app, which is great because they're, they're intuitive, but there's a lot of swiping, there's a lot of tapping and things like that to get your work done. So they're not really the most efficient for your, your workforce on the shop floor. Okay? You, uh, um, you're going to find that you may even slow them down by doing something like this. However, if you have fixed stations and shipping and receiving, maybe that's a good solution. Okay, so those are some of the things to think about with both the ADCS and the tablet and the phone client. Now, one step up from that is, is getting a third-party add-on, and there's a few out there. <coughs> we produce one, of course, uh, that, that you can talk to Archer Point about. But typically, these, these add-ons, what they do is they run on a rugged device, right? So they'll run on something that can get run over by a forklift or dropped onto concrete and things like that and just keep working. And the interface is uh, very specific to making the people on the shop floor more efficient. So, for example, if I'm doing picking, I can have it as simple as I walk up and scan the item I'm picking and then move on. And it defaults in the quantity and the bins and everything else. Or if I want better accuracy, I can have the guy scan the bin, scan the item, and then specify a quantity. And of course, slightly longer process, you know, maybe three seconds instead of one second, but that gets me to my inventory accuracy. I now know that I'm picking the right product from the right bin with the appropriate quantity, okay? But back to my original point, 
you can tailor that interface, tailor that workflow to a graphical tool to make it meet your, your needs, your process needs in the warehouse. And it keeps you very efficient. So the guys are very quick using these types of dedicated uh, scanners and dedicated software. Okay. They also do a lot more than, than standard nav, such as advanced inventory count. So if you have a lot of inventory uh, in your warehouse, um, you know, you need you, you base nav inventory count probably isn't cutting it for you. You're probably already using Excel or Access or some other tool to help you with your inventory counts. You need to get rid of that and, and go with, uh, you know, an advanced inventory count module that, that's going to do that for you, right? So, um, again, they add more to what standard nav offers. So it's not just data collection, they add additional functionalities and uh, a better interface for the shop floor. All right. When we're talking about shop floor data collection, typically we use this term when we're talking about um, production facilities, right? So not necessarily warehouse, but more production. However, it can be used in warehouse. And the idea behind this is we really have two distinct types of information we want to capture in an environment. One is material oriented, typically picking, shipping, receiving, things like that, QC, that type of stuff. Uh, and the other is more labor oriented. So if you have, uh, and, and normally people in the warehouse don't want to track labor, though we can, um, but in a, in a production environment, we want to track how long people spent on a production order or doing asset maintenance or how long they spent on a job or um, non-productive time or how much time they spent on rework uh, within the facility. And we want that to be, again, efficient and accurate. So um, we use a barcode or traveler that they can scan and record their time. The other thing we can do is actually capture time and attendance, which now feeds into payroll. So from the guy, the time the guys scan the barcode in the morning until they get their pay stub, nobody's doing any data entry whatsoever. So you go, you get to a point where you can have, you know, four or five hundred employees managed by a single payroll uh, person, right? So it, it really dramatically improves your efficiency and again the accuracy of the information that's coming in. Right? So now what's happening in the real world and your shop floor is mimicked in real time uh, for the most part within your virtual environment in that. Okay. And as you can see me, I'm waving my arms and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Normally I'd be asking for questions as we go. If you do have questions, just put them in the chat window and we'll, we'll get to them after. Um, just a little bit more on this, I'll, I'll do a couple slides of case studies here to give you an idea of the return on investment you would expect from, from these types of um, implementations. So <clears throat> here's an example where we had uh, an environment with, with several thousand uh, items. Uh, you know, it was about 10 or 12,000. Very, you know, fair amount of inventory on hand. It used to take them roughly a couple of weeks to do their inventory from pre-counts, from preparing everything to doing pre-counts to doing the data entry a lot of Excel reconciliation, things like that, uh, to getting the final count, right? So that's typical for a lot of people. You know, we had uh, another client recently, same thing. Before we got in there, five days with 16 people to do their inventory count. In, in that example, they dropped down to a single day to do their inventory count. So they saved four days times 16 people uh, just by going to a, a better, you know, barcoded counting solution. Uh, in this particular case study, <coughs> what we did was we implemented, uh, you know, the advanced count and the uh, the barcode scanning, uh, and uh, put all of that in. They started doing cycle counts, but the first full physical inventory count went from two weeks to about four to five days. Okay, so really the system paid for itself the first time uh, they used it, and we see that a lot. You know, the other guys I just mentioned that was again fairly recent. You know, the first time you use the system, it pays for itself. It's strictly on the inventory count, not including any of those other things that you have to deal with, uh, you know, like inventory accuracy and pick efficiency and better receiving and shipping processes, right? So very easy to quantify the results you're going to get when you use uh, the system. So that's sort of an inventory barcoding uh, case study. Another one, uh, from a manufacturing point of view, we're going to go in, and, uh, you know, they did a lot of uh, manual time cards. So you can read all this. Um, really, uh, they had a lot of data entry, 
because they had all these manual time cards coming in that they had to date enter and they had to re-enter for payroll and all of that kind of stuff. Well, of course, we went in there, we put in, um, and, and again, talk to your Archer Point rep for information on this. They can give you an ROI calculator. It'll help you decide if this makes sense for you. Um, but what it does is allows you to actually scan a barcode to start tracking time. And then you can still manually enter time, or you can clock on, clock off, that type of thing. And so we put a system like this in, and the results are, uh, you know, basically the two people that were doing full-time data entry are now doing something else, really, is what it amounted to. And they went down to one payroll person for several hundred employees, right? So just on that alone, they paid for the entire system company-wide in about six months, not including all the ancillary benefits like better visibility into what's happening in the shop floor, better visibility into root causes of rework, all of those sorts of things uh, that were, were not possible. Okay. So those are the types of things you can, you can expect to see if your information coming from the shop floor is more automated and more accurate. All right. Again, I would normally jump in and say any questions, but if you have them, we'll, we'll cover them at the end. What I'm going to do is jump in and give you a quick demo uh, of a couple of pieces of software here. <laughs> and uh, you know, we're going to keep it a little shorter today, but uh, uh, again, we'll, we'll leave a lot of time at the end for questions. All right, so uh, let me just uh, clear this out here. So what you see, <laughs> on the screen right now, I'm just going to come up here. This is actually a physical device uh, sitting on my desk. Um, and so what happens is I can actually, you know, I can use the mouse to control it, but, uh, you know, this is a style of device that, that would be typically advocating in a warehouse environment. Um, you know, a lot of people ask us about phones and tablets, uh, you know, Typically, they're not going to cut it. They're not ergonomic. They're not rugged enough for that environment. The people who do use them typically use uh, the solution for their outside sales guys or when you manage inventory, that type of thing uh, for, um, uh, for the phones. Okay? But basically, what this allows me to do is you know, the, the user can come in and can tap the screen, and I'll go into pics. And typically what you'll do is you'll scan a barcode. So you might not want to get away from the paper in the system. Um, you might want to use that as a trigger, a physical trigger, to say, hey, warehouse guy, here's some work for you to do. He'll pick it up, he'll scan it, and that loads up the pick on the dedicated device. Or if you want to go paperless, I can tap this lookup and find the pick document uh, that, that I need to, to execute. And I can have it auto-assigned to me and things like that when I grab it. So I grab that pick document. And it brings it up and it shows me everything that I'm supposed to, to do on that particular document. Now, the nice thing about a solution like this, again, is it makes it very efficient for the guys doing the scanning. So it shows me, and, and back to that decision support, more than just making it efficient for uh, scanning, it gives me some context about what I'm supposed to do on the shop floor. Uh, uh, so, for example, here it shows me everything I need to actually pick. I don't see one line at a time. Though there is a mode that if you want to enable it, that I only see one line at a time, you can do that. But the advantage of this is, let's say I'm actually standing here at this bin, you know, W414, and that's actually where I want to start picking. So I could go in there and scan that bin barcode and um, uh, just start picking from there. So you'll notice that if I scan that barcode, it automatically selects the first line with that particular bin on it. Okay, so I don't have to choose an edit box, swipe the screen, tap somewhere, I scan a barcode, the system reacts, I don't even have to look at the screen, I scan the bin barcode, and then I scan uh, the item barcode and optionally enter quantity. So in this case, what I've got, again, for helping guys on the shop floor, you saw a picture of that item pop up for a couple of seconds. We can enable that visual verification. So if you do have a temporary workforce or something like that, um, by doing that, when they scan the barcode, they can visually verify that what they're holding in their hand matches what you know they scanned, um, so that you know you're, you're again improving your inventory accuracy. Now for the quantity entry, this is entirely optional. We could allow them to specify a quantity here. We could default in the quantity from uh, the the pick line. 
we could just have the, the quantity come in as one. So if you need to pick five, you scan five times. Any of that is possible through simple configuration. Right? So uh, in this case, it's asking for the quantity. So I'm going to enter one and you know, just tap enter. And basically, I've, I've done my pick. Okay? So I've taken one. I've got nine left to pick. And again, back to a little bit of that decision support. Let's say there was only one in that particular bin. What do I do? Well, a few things. <clears throat> one, I could go in and I could uh, add a note to this that notifies the warehouse supervisor that there's an issue. So if I do that, I can say something like, you know, bin empty 04-14 and uh, send that note off to my supervisor. When they come into NAV, and, uh, and in the role center, we could optionally email or whatever. This is the one I just entered here. You can see I've done this demo once before. Uh, you come in, you can click on it, and they actually go to that document and know exactly what's going on. So without the person in the warehouse moving a step, they've started this process for inventory cleanup. Okay. Then, okay, sure, he's notified the supervisor. What does he do next? Well. Next, I've got it set up for F8 on this keyboard, but uh, to, to illustrate, I'll tap the, the screen, and I can hit item inquiry. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to drill down and actually see where else I might be able to pick this particular item from. So yes, I can pick it in the current bin, but I can go over to this bin potentially and pick it from there instead. So I can come in and change the bin and override what NAV has told me, assuming I have the, the appropriate permissions. So that's a little bit on the, <clears throat> on the warehouse side. I use picking as an example, but the same principle applies you know, really everywhere in the system. Uh, some additional functionality we have on receiving, or again, anywhere in the system, uh, because you can customize your workflows and your menus from within there. So I can come into NAV and add whatever business logic I want into this application. But receiving, by default, allows me to actually take a picture of product uh, as it's coming in. Uh, so for example, uh, I receive something, it's a damaged box, the receiver right there on the dock can take a picture of that, it gets attached to the nav based on the rules you specify, the purchaser gets alerted, optionally if you want, and right there without taking a step, you start an RMA process back to the vendor because the purchaser has you know, a picture of the issue, it's linked to the purchase order, and they can start working on getting things resolved immediately. I could also record a voice note as well, along with that if I like. Okay, so lots of potential for that. For for QC in general, we have a lot of people using it for shipping. They take a picture of what's going out the door, uh, you know, so that they have proof that when it left, it was in good shape. Right. So lots of options for that that picture picture capability in the system. Okay. Now we'll talk about inventory count because you know inventory count time is coming up for a lot of people at the end of the year, and I. I just went through and ranted about how you need a better inventory count solution than probably what you're using. So if you're doing barcoded inventory counts, you can also do these paper-based, but of course you're going to get the value if you do barcoded. I can come in here, and the way it works is I create um, count sheets, typically one count sheet per count team that I have out on the shop floor. So for each handheld, typically you have, you have a count sheet. So I can go into one of these sheets. I'll just grab team three. And uh, what it does is it opens up and it starts out blank, okay? So in this particular case, um, I haven't scanned anything yet, okay? So I haven't, um, I, I've been told, you take your handheld, you go down shelf one, and you scan everything you find, okay? This is for a full physical count. For a cycle count, it would actually list all the items and bins that I need to verify, okay? And it's a blind count. So on this particular case, it's a full count, I'd actually come in and I'd scan the bin. Okay, so once I scan the bin, it comes up here, tells me what bin I scanned. Uh, and we can have it remember the bin you scanned or forget it. We can also uh, subdivide bins. So if you have a big receiving bin, we can subdivide that into multiple sections without having to change any of your configuration in there, that type of thing. But at any rate, the inventory count process, I scan my bin. I scan my item. Um, again, we're going to have it show a picture if you really want, or you turn that off. I enter the quantity I've counted, and I move on to my next bin and my next item. And I go all the way through, and that's how I count inventory. And that's how you get from five days of counting to one day of counting. 
And then within NAV, you can come in there and you can go into uh, the inventory count area. And this is where you come in and you do your reconciliations. So there's a difference analysis you can run. You can get all that detail and compare what they scan in the real world, in the physical world, and compare it with what's recorded in there in your virtual world. So again, the inventory count is a very stark example of that virtual and physical worlds, you know, being out of sync. You run an analysis that tells you how much they're out of sync. You do your audited recounts from within here, so you can uh, you can generate recount sheets, all of that kind of stuff, and you sync up your physical and your virtual worlds, so that next time somebody does a pick, you can have a high degree of confidence that what you've been told to pick is actually where it's supposed to be. Okay, so that's a little bit on the warehousing side. Now, to switch over to a little bit of the manufacturing side, oh, and you know, on this, I, you know, I, I, I sort of keep them separated and isolated, but you know, there is a lot of crossover. So, you know, when we're doing warehouse activities, we might feed that into production. So I can actually use mobile devices like this to do consumption, to do output, you know, those types of things, okay? Similarly, when we get into the uh, time collection or the shop floor data collection, I don't have to just collect time. I can collect uh, material requirements as well. So I can do output, I can do consumption, quality capture, all those sorts of things as well. So there's overlap between the two, you know, sort of tools that you're using for barcoding, okay? Um, <clears throat> in this particular case, what this allows me to do, it allows me to scan a, a badge, uh, and I just plugged in my scanner here, it allows me to scan a badge to clock an employee in. Okay, so to basically unlock the terminal. And it tells me exactly when I scanned in for the day. Okay, so that's my time and attendance portion. So I can use that to go to payroll to again eliminate that manual entry aspect of it. So I've got more accurate information. So once I've unlocked the terminal, uh, the next step for somebody is to actually indicate what activity they're performing. So at this point, you know, somebody could come up behind them, scan their badge and clock in for the day, that sort of thing. But let's say I, I walked up, I scan my badge, and I'm going to start some work. I scan a barcode on the traveler, and it immediately brings up everything I'm supposed to do uh, for that particular uh, activity. So it gives me work instructions, gives me a bill of material, allows me to do output for it, and um, allows me to see any linked documents from within that. So if I have assembly diagrams or um, you know, jig setup or customer specific things, you know, I can click on any of these and launch that on the shop floor. This is again giving your guys on the shop floor the information they need to make the appropriate decisions. And then also quality measures, right? So the nice thing about this is I can capture this rather than on a piece of paper, you know, I can have a QC guy walking around with a tablet, you know, running this that just runs in a browser and actually capturing that quality information, you know, in real time, and it gets fed into NAV, and I've got all of that information there, right? I don't have a separate system that I'm managing. I don't have to do duplicate entry, manual entry, or anything like that, okay? Um, uh, so, you know, this is basically how it works. I just entered an hour. We can clock in, clock out to calculate the time, but, you know, I've only been on there for a few seconds. Uh, you know, a couple of other, other things. <clears throat> it's not for just for production personnel. If you have maintenance people that are doing asset maintenance, we can track that time. I mentioned we can track non-productive time, first aid, rework. You know, whatever really, whatever activities that are occurring on the shop floor, you can track via a barcode. Okay. Uh, back in the PowerPoint presentation, I mentioned there's you know potentially some other options besides barcoding, and one of them is is a tablet, right, a touch screen interface. So let's say you wanted to use a solution like this without using barcoding. Well, um, it's not quite as nice because you do potentially have to type things in. So for example, if I'm on a tablet and I don't have a Bluetooth barcode scanner associated with it, I could come in here and you know enter my uh, user ID and clock in that way, and of course I entered it incorrectly, so that's an immediate uh, example of why barcoding is better, because if I would scanned the barcode, it would have been accurate. So I can do that, and if I'm running a touch screen, <coughs> what I can do, if I'm just going to clock in as somebody else here, instead of showing my type card by default, it can show me a dispatch list, and the dispatch list shows me all the work that's either assigned to me directly, so 
Sam Clockin is this Kelly person. Here's the work assigned to that that person. That's independent of work centers and machine centers. Or uh, I can choose one of the options up here on the touch screen. Just tap that, clock on, and again in real time I've now sent that information to Nav uh, without using barcoding in this case. But it's the same basic idea, right? I've now got my physical world, what's going on in real time happening on my shop floor, tied into what Nav thinks should be going on. Okay, so again we get that accurate um, feedback loop uh, from the shop to to Nav. All right. Um, now, um, this gives us a, a fair amount of time for questions. I'm, I'm going to stop here rather than jump in and, and go through, you know, more of what you would see in NAV around, you know, approvals and, you know, all the different things you can do with the, the warehouse side. Really, uh, this gives you a general idea of how we can capture data in the shop, in the warehouse, feed it into NAV. If you want more detail, you know, just contact your Arctic Point rep or um, info at archerpoint.com and, and we can set up something that's more tailored uh, you know for you uh, you know and, and help you out that way okay uh, so that, with that I'll, uh, I'll actually open it up to, uh, uh, to any questions that, that you might have hey thanks so much mark and again if you do have any questions feel free to type them into the questions pane of your go to webinar console or just use the raise your hand feature which is uh, should be next to your name don't have any questions at this moment we'll give just a, a moment for us to compile those and to fill the, the gap one thing I do get asked about a lot is um, what type of hardware uh, are you looking at well <clears throat> there's there's the ruggedized devices and those are generally the best fit for your warehouse and they started around thirteen hundred dollars. Um, you know, phones like consumer phones for your outside sales guys. You, you, you roughly know what the costs are. These fixed terminals, uh, you know, tablets or fixed terminals for production. There's really a lot of options like thin clients or Chrome boxes that are really around a hundred dollars or you know, one hundred and fifty dollars for the the terminals on the shelf floor. And and there's a million brands out there, Honeywell. You know, Data Logic, which is the example I used. Um, you know, a number of things like that. Yeah, lots of options. We don't have any questions at this time, so I just want to take a moment to uh, thank everybody for uh, taking time out of their day to attend. We hope you consider it time well spent uh, to help us to continue to offer value. We'd like to ask you take it just a a minute or two more to give us your feedback and make any suggestions you'd have for future lunch and learn topics. You can also submit your questions to info at archerpoint.com. Uh, that's info at archerpoint.com or contact your Archerpoint representative for those clients out there on the call today. Mark, once again, thanks for a great presentation. Uh, safe travels. And uh, this concludes today's session, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.